Let's look at question 12 from section 3.5, graphing techniques using transformations. So uh, let's see what we can do with this one. So find the function that is finally graphed after following the transformations are applied to the graph of y equals the square root of x in the order listed. So starting with the square root of x, we know that if we graph that, the squared function, we have 0, 0, 1, 1, and this 4, 2. And our graph kind of takes on this look here. So the first thing we want to do is move this graph down 5. So if we move this graph down 5, so each of these points moves down 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We should now have this function. This would be our new function here. So next thing we want to do is reflect this about the x-axis. So if we look at these points here, I have 0, 5. That should now turn into a, if I go over the x-axis, that should be 0, 5. And this point that's at 1, negative 4 would become then 1, 4. And this point that's 4, negative 3 would become then 4, Three, so if I reflect across the x-axis, I should have this. Here is my graph, and we do have the symmetry going on. So this is where we are now. And then, if we reflect it about the y-axis, this graph then just gets flipped the other direction. So we're looking at um, this point stays here. This point gets reflected to here. And this point is reflected one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four over here. So our final graph should take on this look here. So that's what we're looking for graph-wise is a graph that takes on this look. So if we say f of x is equal to the square root of x, that's our parent function. And then what we want to do is shift it down five. So if we leave this part out and just, just stay with f of x for a second. So to make it move down five, so we have f of x minus five on the outside. That's our new function. We can now call this g of x. This is our new function. But what we want to do now is reflect that about the x-axis. So to reflect that about the x-axis, what I gotta do is take the opposite of g of x then. So take the opposite of g of x, I gotta take the opposite of this function. So this becomes then the opposite of f of x plus five. And if we want, we can now call this new function h of x. And then what we want to do there is reflect this about the y-axis. To do that, we need to put a negative on the inside. So what we have is then h of negative x, if you will. So that means I have to replace this with a negative. So I have the opposite of f of negative x plus 5. Now remember, f of x was the square root function. So we have then the square root, the opposite of the square root of negative x plus 5. So that would be our function. So again, what we kind of pick up on here is our first function we came up with is, you know, y equals the square root of x minus 5. But we have to reflect this about the x-axis. We have to take the opposite of all that. So I got to take the opposite of the square root of x minus 5. And that's going to be this, the opposite of the square root of x plus 5. 
and then to reflect it across the uh, the y-axis, I got to put the negative on the inside. So I have the opposite of the square root of negative x plus 5. So that should be our, our function. So if we use our graphing calculator, let me pause for a second, see if I can pull that up. So if we play this out using our graphing calculator to kind of verify things, so if we go y equals the square root of x, if I graph that, so let me turn my stat plot off. I've got some statistics going on here. I'm going to hit my zoom, hit six there. So there's our parent function to start with. So then if we want to move it down five, we have y equals the square root of x minus, whoops, got to be on the outside though, minus 5, should make it move down 5. And then to reflect it across the x-axis, I'm looking at this graph right here. So we've got this. Now I want to see if we can make this graph. So if we go y equals the opposite the square root of x plus 5. Does that reflect it about the x-axis? If I graph that, so that's how that does create this, just my scale is not quite the same there. I didn't quite go out as far. I'm, I'm out here around 4, so we're back up in this area. So got that going on. So that does match what we thought there. And then if I look at this last one, y equals then... Try to create this, see if this graph creates this. So the opposite of the square root of the opposite of x, and then put a plus 5 on the outside. I graph that. That's how it does make my final graph. So this should be our, our correct answer then for this problem. So our final answer should be then y equals the opposite of the square root of the opposite of x plus 5, that would do these transformations in order.